Welcome. My name is Monica Kwiatek and I'm a CRM architect at Nudesic. Thank you for joining our webinar. Um, just to learn a little bit more about how Microsoft Dynamics CRM can be leveraged in education space when you are hungry for a bigger piece of, of the admission pie. When it comes to CRM technology, I am primarily interested in finding a business solution. What I mean by that is to find a way to leverage the CRM platform to fit the business processes that you have in your institution through configurations, customizations, extensions, and integrations um, with the aim to increase the visibility of the data that you have so you know what to do with it and most of all to increase their efficiency and minimize the effort um, on having to handle the data. This is uh, just a reminder about the housekeeping that we're going to keep the questions. You can ask the questions throughout my presentation, but we'll keep answering of the questions till the end of the session. So just a quick overview of what I'll be reviewing today. Um, I will provide you a brief overview on New Desic as an organization and in what context CRM is a part of a larger picture of what New Desic offers when it comes to CRM and related technologies. After that, I want to have an overview with you of a typical student life cycle and how the management through customer relationship management feeds into this life cycle that you're trying to see your students through, as well as to go through a couple of scenarios and concepts of how CRM can be used to have the student go from the stage of being a prospect to a graduate. NewDesic is a Microsoft National System Integrator and we are also a Microsoft Gold Certified Partner. Um, there are many thousands of Microsoft partners out there in the world, but only some of them are what is considered to be the managed ones and we are one of them. NewDesic is one of those managed partners for Microsoft. As a company, we have offices across US and also in India with over 400 employees in US alone. As you can see by the slide, we deliver a lot of a la, sorry, a large range of solutions to help your business overcome your particular unique challenges. In this scenario, most of the CRM projects that Nudesic engages in require at least one other complementary technology. And since CRM products are more or less a commodity these days, um, the making or breaking of a CRM project is mostly due to how it's implemented and deployed. And we as your technology partner have a big influence in this aspect because we are the ones that actually come in and find out about you, find out what you need and leverage the capability of, tool, of the tool itself to fit what you need, to provide you the solution that you need. Um, we have a lot of experience, as you can tell, in um, other areas, and um, CRM itself is an integral part of it all. And this is um, sort of the platform that I come from, and this is what the rest of the pre presentation will be about. Now, also, just to let you know, as a company, um, as you can see from the quote of our CEO, Pasa Rohani, our core beliefs is to deliver what you need. It's, uh, we have the passion for the technology, we have a passion for understanding you. And what I'm showing here is some of the education institutions that we have worked with um, in the midst of many clients that span not only the education space but outside of it in order to give them what they need. I know I keep on repeating it but that's probably going to be the highlight of the whole presentation. It is about the needs that you have to do your business and how CRM fits into it. Now let's just go into the scenario of what is it like for you to get your students in. So this is a, a higher education um, institution scenario where you are trying to get prospective students, attract them to your institution and have them enroll with you versus anywhere else versus not enrolling at all. So it is a funnel. Um, there's always a lot of people that are kind of curious about who you are and what you provide. These are the ones that we in here call suspects. They're probably checking out your websites. They're seeing you in your printed material. They are just getting curious. 
some of them will reach out to you. Um, there are many avenues in which they might reach out to you. Um, like I mentioned, it might be the websites that maybe contact you through the contact uh, form in there. Maybe they will email you directly. Maybe they will ring you. You're already getting to know something about them. They are your prospects. And the idea is to nurture these prospects to, um, so they come to the face of being a candidate being a candidate that's ready to engage with you even more, ready to talk, maybe even have an interview with you, whether it's going to happen by the phone or whether you're going to see them face to face. Well, the whole idea is that they are ready to potentially enroll. You want to see your prospects and candidates through it all. You would like them to enroll with you more than with anybody else or to drop out the whole idea of enrolling altogether. So, just to go down this pathway again and actually talk about the life cycle and how different sort of ideas dovetail. I might be describing exactly what you already know, but I think it's kind of always good to remind oneself what is it that we're dealing with. So we have this student that is trying to engage with you. Actually, maybe this is the pathway that you want them to jump onto. You want them to contact you and get a little bit serious about wanting to talk to you. How do you achieve that? Um, you achieve that, um, I'll kind of go through that again because I jumped ahead of myself, but the whole reason why they want to contact you is because you are kind of the gateway to move to maybe graduate school and definitely to move into the wider world into the, um, to become an employee in whatever company, whatever institution. They are going out there and for you, they are going out there representing not only themselves, but representing you as an institution, representing you as the kind of education that you provided them. To get them into that cycle, um, to get them to engage, as I mentioned already, chances are your marketing, um, um, whoever that may be in your institution, maybe it's not called the marketing team, but it's something very similar to it, is already putting a lot of information out there about you as an institution, who you are, what kind of degrees are you providing, what kind of courses you're providing, are they online, on site, how flexible you are, anything out there that you have, so the prospective students can actually find out if you have what they need. Do you have what they're looking for? Um, you engage them not only through sort of the wider media, but there might be situations where they've already kind of um, gave you the information. Maybe you went out to schools to meet the students, the prospective students face to face, um, and you collected information from them. It might be something simple like knowing their first name and their last name and maybe a way to contact them back um, and knowing maybe when they graduate so you have this kind of time sensitive data where you can actually see, hey, you know, maybe it's time to contact this person. They're looking at graduating and they kind of reached out to us. This kind of management, and I'll go through it, a lot of it has got to do with also for your benefit to find out how serious are they have they just reached out once and they really don't want to talk to you ever again? So there is probably no reason to try to reach out to somebody who already told you, hey, I'm not interested, versus somebody with whom you can have a continual dialogue that sees them all the way to become the candidate and enroll with you. This management uh, that I'm showing here in the blue doesn't exactly just stop here uh, for any institution. You also want to interact with the future institutions that your students might go to, future graduate, for example, when they go to the graduate school. You want to also know what that school offers so you can see the pool of your students and then collaborate with that other institution. Why? Because that's kind of the healthy approach and this is also where you give your students what they might be looking forward to, to doing. Some of them might be looking at the graduate school rather than going straight into the employment. You want to see them through that. You want to be there to nurture them through that and for them to be happy. It doesn't really stop there because when they go into the wider world and they become the alumni of your institution, you do want to keep them engaged for reasons other than just um, future enrollment. They are also there as a piece of your advertising 
um, what your institution has been like, with the idea that effectively maybe some of them will decide to come back to you because they want to do another diploma, another degree with you, maybe you're offering graduate courses that they are interested in, some online courses that they want to brush up on, and ultimately they kind of are your poster children They might um, tell other students, other prospective students to have a look at your institution. All of this is, a, is basically part of that whole cycle of customer relationship management and you want to be always able to oversee what's going on in your institution from this point of view so you can efficiently target the right areas where it matters instead of reaching out to somebody who has multiple time expressly said, look, don't worry about it, I'm not interested, you can actually invest all your time, your energy and your resources to go where it matters and get the students get the advertising from the alumni that you need in the future, get the support from the alumni that you need in the future. So the first part of this life cycle is to get those leads, to get those prospective students, those candidates. Um, there are a couple of avenues and depending on the institution you might be using uh, paid or non-paid channels. The paid channels often time are agencies that basically go out there and search out for students for you, uh, maybe throughout the country, maybe in your particular state, depending how wide your reach is and what you're looking for. They are the ones that would get as much information as they can about the leads that you're getting, um, how serious they are get as much detail as possible and pass them on to you and also at the best, in the best sort of scenario, be the ones that make sure that you're not getting duplicates as well. So they would pass the information off to you. Of course you have your own um, so-called non-paid channels and I kept, I gave already an example of um, a web service, maybe some lending pages, um, your advertising out there where anybody could basically click and find out about your institution. This is a lot of information coming in and the way that it can come in into the CRM is in different forms and depending whether it's something that is written on a piece of paper or something that's electronically entered somewhere, you pretty much start right here. I mean this is just an example of a form from one of our clients this is one of the many ways in which they collect information about the, the prospective students. This is a form that gets filled out by hand and as long as it stays in that format, it's really hard to manage it. As you can appreciate, and you probably have forms of your own that are very similar, this is a lot of information to go through. Um, if you have a lot of leads, if you have a lot of students filling out forms like that for you, you have to have a way to go through them to pinpoint the students that are of interest, of interest for you to call them back, to send them information back, to email them, to include them in your campaigns. So whether it comes in a written form like this or we're dealing with the integration with another system where there is an electronic transfer of the information, for example if the student fills out a web form and that all of that information, written or electronic, would come into the CRM. This is just a mock-up um, idea of what a, of a lead form would look like uh, for a prospective student. You can have all of this information, these examples that I'm showing you right now, you can have much more. The beauty of the CRM is that what you see here, what kind of, kind of information you collect here can be customized, can be configured and tailored to what you need. So you can have the information that matters right up the top of the form, further down the form. The whole idea here is, is to take that lead information into an electronic format through which you can then search for very particular criteria. Why do I say that? Is because once all these leads come to you, what you want to do is um, triage calls and campaigns. If you happen to be in an institution that actually ends up calling your prospective students, this is really important. You want the right person to do the right call to the right prospective student. It is kind of as simple as that and this is the scenario that you're aiming for. So you don't want to, um, so to speak, waste the time calling the student that is not appropriate 
who hasn't made up their mind. And if you happen to be somebody that's calling a student who's interested in their particular program that you're offering, you want from your side somebody who knows something about the program reaching out to them. Your chances of getting them even more interested will definitely increase. So what I mean by that is when you have that incoming lead, you're going to put that information to the CRM and the lead that you're putting in can have a variety of attributes. I just have a couple of points in here. These are just some of the examples of what you might have. Uh, the status being, for example, is this a new student? Um, is this a high school student? When are they graduating? What are they interested in? Maybe they're interested in going to one particular campus that you have. They haven't decided on a program yet. I think this would be a good time to speak to them and say, look, this campus offers certain types of degrees. Which one would you like to inquire about or know more about all of them? Um, maybe just one particular one, how can I help you? Um, the location that they at might also be very important if you want to attract them. Um, they might be living in your state and that's the very reason why you might be a very interesting proposition for them. You want to engage them maybe for that reason alone. So what we have done for one of our clients, and maybe the nomenclature in your institution is different, is we kind of dealt with this idea of putting all these prospective students into segments. And each segment, it's kind of like putting them into a queue, uh, so they actually being queued up so they talk to the right person on your side. And that means, and you can probably imagine it by now, once all that information about the lead is in CRM, you can start querying all the attributes of the leads, like the examples that I have above, to decide which segment they fall into. So, and prioritize that segment, because you might say that every single high school student that reached out to you or you have a lead for, who is graduating within the next year, is your prime target. They are the students that you want to talk to because they are looking at graduating very soon, so the chances of them choosing an institution are very high. You might have a segment where you are interested in people who have graduated some time ago and they are looking at coming back to your institution. You might have a different admissions personnel dealing with them versus the high school um, scenario. And you know your institution much better than I do, so you can probably think of many different segments here. The idea, though, being that once we have the leads, we have the attributes, once we have the segments and we've decided how we want to group our leads, um, we can actually create customizations in CRM where these two things start talking to each other. This is how you put the leads into the groups. This is how you prioritize them up into different segments with the idea that then you can queue them up to the right people that will talk back to them. Now I'm calling them here call group one, group, uh, call group two, and whatever number, how many different call groups you have, but it's all about the students talking to their specialist. Your specialist is the person that knows you and it's specialist in talking to high school students. I'm just throwing some examples out there. It's a specialist that's talking to somebody who's maybe looking for a military career afterwards. Maybe it's somebody who's interested in coming back into the fold, back um, to studying with you. You want the right people engaging with them and talking to them, making them excited and coming back to you. This is also something you can leverage for sending out the campaigns to these people. So you're not sending a campaign uh, to somebody who's graduated from high school quite a few years ago that is actually targeted for high school students. Maybe there's an event that you have that's absolutely tailored to the high school students and where you want to capture those high school students that are graduating within the next or two, maybe three years. So. The CRM, with all the information that comes in, you can use it to your advantage with the extras to kind of work through these process, processes so you, you always keep them excited. What you probably would need, and I would not be surprised if you're already doing it, but need a nice way to kind of automate it, and you can do that through a CRM, 
is to work out a schedule, especially when you're dealing with very fresh leads that you want to engage immediately, work out a schedule, how often do you want to call out to them. So this is kind of like one of the scenarios that we dealt with with one of our clients where as soon as the lead came in and was a hot lead, what they deemed as a hot lead, and that's also something you can do in CRM by um, looking at the attributes of the lead. They wanted to call them immediately if they fit a certain criteria to belong to that segment. Um, it could have been a segment where currently there's a very kind of up and coming and a very hot topic program that you're offering in one of your campuses and you really want to get the students interested in it and enrolling in it. So you could have a schedule where you call them quite frequently. I mean, some of these calls may not be successful, so you call them immediately, no response, you call them five minutes later, 15 minutes later, or whatever your schedule is, and then you keep on following up with them. The idea here being that every single one of the sticks that I'm showing you is actually something that the CRM does behind the scenes where it automates the creation of activities such as phone calls, emails, um, campaigns, whatever it may be, that are directed to your prospects. Um, that way you don't have to sit there and remember when is the next time I need to call this person because my first call now has not been successful. You actually get an activity assigned to you, especially if you happen to be the callee, when you need to do it the next time. So you don't have to have your own in your head or on piece of paper or somewhere design your own schedule. It's a very kind of prescribed schedule that you and as an institution can have and you always pretty much approach things this way when it comes to segment one. Segment two, you might have a slightly different strategy. And this, uh, you have your own reasons as an institution why you would approach them maybe less aggressively than segment one. And any combination you can think of down to segment X, which is probably your lowest priority leads, um, and you still want to reach out for, to them. You don't want to, uh, for them to drop through the cracks, but you do not need to reach out to them immediately. Now let me just hang out here for a little bit. I know that I'm just kind of showing one scenario when it comes to management of the leads and what to do when you're trying to reach out to them. Uh, when you're trying to call them or send them campaigns or send them emails. Um, you can probably imagine how a scenario like this, so when you think about this from a process point of view, may be applicable in a lot of other situations for you. Whether it's just for the management of the leads or whether the prospect has become a candidate, so they are thinking about enrolling. This might be a process that you also want to use to direct that prospect, uh, sorry, by then candidate to the right admissions person. So they can have maybe that interview, that face-to-face, -face, that filling out of the enrollment form. This is also something that you can, uh, as a process, leverage to once the person is enrolled to see them through the life cycle of being with you as a student. Um, to make sure that they are there with you. They are not going to drop out within the first few weeks. You actually, they enrolled and they staying with you for the duration of their degree, preferably, so they can graduate. That's your success rate. Um, you can think of a lot of scenarios. The idea here being is that whatever your scenario is, CRM can be tailored to handle the process that you're after. Um, to create this sort of helpful tools such as generating documentation of those phone calls, those appointments, those activities in a correct way that makes sense for your process. To make sure that a particular piece of information is forwarded to the correct person that actually has the best skills to do something about it. So once you had the initial calls with the prospect, once they become a candidate, the right admissions people can talk to them. Um, your situations are as specific as what I'm describing or very different to what I'm describing. CRM has the process to handle it. CRM can be tailored. So it goes back to what I said at the very beginning. This is not about you fitting into the CRM. This is about CRM fitting into you foremost and first of all. So going beyond 
the candidate, as I already mentioned, once the student enrolls, you can also leverage this existing platform of CRM that you have, not only for the management of the leads, but also to manage the students that are ready with you. Attendance is often very important because you want the student to stay with you. You don't want them to drop out within the first few weeks. That would not be a, a successful story either for them or for you. You want them to, to stay till they graduate. Performance goes a long way towards that. Um, students being able to communicate back to you what their needs are and that way you can basically do some case management with them, whatever those needs might be. It might be just something to do with the housing, it might be something to do with parking, it might be something to do with health services that you provide or don't provide or anything of that nature. What that is, it's still that part of customer management. I mean the student in this scenario is your customer. When you see them through to graduation and the whole experience is a very good one for them, when they go out there into the world, they are likely to sing your praises because not only did they graduate from your institution, they had a very good time of it and you took care of them. By extension, you also want to take care of yourself as an institution. So the institution management is being able to, with all this data that you can imagine by now has been generated and it's inside of the CRM platform that you have, the platform that has been tailored for you, you can see the areas where you're growing, the areas where there is more interest. You can also see where things are maybe not going so well, so maybe there's a higher demand for parking, just as an example. CRM with all the data flooding in from different sources, especially if you end up with a CRM that's integrated to a lot of other um, maybe databases that you already have in your, in your institution, you create this one hub where you can monitor it all. And in an institution, by being able to see up-to-date data, you can react very quickly. Not only on the whole admission cycle, but beyond it. So the dot, dot, dots on both of these uh, basically comes down to what are the scenarios you can think of? What are your pain points that CRM can come in and fix for you, so to speak, with the help of a partner like us, New Desic? So just to complete this um, webinar, the whole scenario here is about this life cycle. It's um, how to make sure that all these orange errors that you're seeing in here are happening and are happening rightly for you as an institution and get the tool, the CRM tool here that actually allows you to manage it and have a really good insight into it and be very targeted about how you approach all of these people, whether that's a prospective student, current student, your graduates or your graduates that have gone in a full-time employment. CRM can do that for you. So I guess this is where I will open up the, the webinar to any questions and comments that you have. And thank you very much for listening. Great. Thank you, Monica, for that great presentation. Uh, as a reminder, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in um, on your control panel where it says questions, and we will field them as they come in. As of right now, we don't have anything that came in, Monica, so we'll, we'll hang tight for a little bit just to see if any questions do come in. No problem.